Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order for the Brawley City Council and successor agency to the Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency. A regular meeting for Tuesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. We can have the roll call, please. Mayor Nava. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Morton. Councilmember Howdicke. Here. Councilmember Hemby. Here. Councilmember Couchman. Here. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, just a quick announcement that uh, Mayor Pro Tem Donald Wharton will be here uh, shortly. He's on his way in. Uh, his travel got delayed a little bit, but he should be here in about 30 minutes. So he'll be arriving today just a little late. But I did want to make you aware of that. So next item on the agenda is the invocation. If you can please rise. I'll keep it short and sweet for everybody. If you can please bow your heads. God bless our country, God bless our community, and God bless us all here tonight. Amen. 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 All right, thank you. And uh, Pledge of Allegiance by our uh, birthday council member. If she could lead us in the pledge, please. Okay. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Hope that doesn't add another year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two or three happy birthdays. A couple of years. You're good. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written? So moved. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is public appearances and comments, item two. Uh, not to exceed four minutes, this is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. The Mayor will recognize you when you come to the microphone. Please state your name for the record. You are not allowed to make personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. If, you, if there is somebody who'd like to make a public appearance or comment, if you can please uh, come up to uh, the podium here at the left-hand side, your left-hand side. Somebody who's coming up, young man. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Dominic Fiorenza. Hello, Dominic. I'm um, part of the Troop 4070 Boy Scouts in Imperial. And um, the reason why I'm here is because one of the I'm working on the citizenship in the community merit badge. And one of the requirements um, requires me to um, go to a public meeting um, go over one, um, one of the items discussed and report back to my counselor. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Dominic, uh, would you pronounce your last name for me, please? Uh, Fiorenza. Fiorenza, all right. Well, welcome to the Brawley City Council. I know you're probably a little bit nervous, but don't be. You know, it's, uh, it's always difficult to come up before the public and in front of the, you know, uh, the City Council. But uh, pleasure to have you here. So is there anything in particular that you need to to know about the city council or any item that's appearing on the agenda or um, no not really no okay well maybe we have some questions for you right you know with with respect to what you're doing now uh, it's the citizenship in the community merit badge you're you're working for right yes so so just a question for you um, mr. Dominic what is it that interested you in the uh, in the uh, Boy Scouts well uh, well actually uh, I didn't know this at the time but my grandfather actually did it he okay. didn't do it go that far with it but uh, I just saw it as a good opportunity for me to be able to learn more and just be able to help other people. Fantastic. And how long have you been doing that? I've uh, done it for about three years now. Okay, fantastic. What what is what are some of the more memorable times as a Boy Scout that you've had so far? Besides uh, this, of course, because this is the most exciting, right? <laughs> 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 uh, one of the most memorable times was actually a little while back during spring break that I had. Uh, I, I did a three-day backpacking trip in the Sierras. Oh, fantastic. Very cool. Fantastic. It was really fun. Oh, good. Did you learn anything there while you were there? Uh, not really. We just um, started hiking. We had good laughs, but that was mostly it. Okay. Well, so, so you, you learned to laugh out there out in the Sierras. Fantastic. Well, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you're... You're, you're going through your process, but I would ask any of the other council members here if they have any questions for Mr. Dominic. This is part of his, uh, 
his uh, merit badge effort. So if you have questions to ask him, please, please do so. Will you be going to on any other trips for your citizenship badge, like Sacramento or anything like that? Uh, not that I know. Wait. Oh, I'm going to do some. Yeah, I'm going to do some volunteer work at the um, Humane Society. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's cool. That's fantastic. Good. Well, Good it's job. great to have you. And uh, do you have any other questions for us? Uh, not that I can think of right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going we're gonna to cut you loose, but uh, certainly appreciate you coming here and uh, presenting before us. No, we do have another question. Right? I, I think I know your father, Frank. I think I've known him for many, many years. Yeah. So. Okay. He's sitting there in the back in the audience. Yeah. Great. Very nice. Well, congratulations to you. I know it's very difficult sometimes to come up before the public and, and speak, and but you've got through it, and uh, congratulations to you. Let's give him a big you. round of applause. Good job. All right. You did better than you, Sam. Let's see. That's good. That's good. Thanks. Thanks, George. Wow. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public appearance or has a comment for the city council? Anyone else? All right, so we're going to move on. We have a special presentation, and that is uh, item 3A. That's a Brawley Catacall Rodeo Committee update. So I see some of the members from the Catacall Rodeo Committee. Uh, would you like to come up and share your thoughts? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and fellow council members. Uh, I'm Kurt Rutherford. I'm the chairman of the Brawley Catacall Committee, and we had a very successful rodeo last fall. And with that, of course, it always comes back to the numbers, but the turnout from the community and, and the surrounding area was super. And what I'd like to do now is call on Carson Halen to kind of give a recap on the financials. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. Thank you, Kurt. Good evening, Council people <laughs> so uh, this past year uh, we had uh, rents payable to the city of hang on here didn't really expect it have Kurt bring me up here <laughs> <laughs> we were able to make a donation to the Clotted Club uh, in the amount of about eleven thousand dollars for their help uh, with us. We also made a donation to the Sheriff's League, I believe it is, of about uh, $8,000. And we were able to pay rent to the city of 69000 Fantastic. Wow. Well, thank Very you for nice. that. That's and we'll be making improvements down there to the tune of that number. Fantastic. Nice. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Any Kalen. questions? No questions. Thought that was use? a very, very quick update. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Very quick update. He's going for a citizenship badge. Oh, I believe you have something else. I do. I yeah. do. And thank if you. I uh, have the rest of the committee come up for Yeah, we can have everyone come up, please. We'd appreciate that very much. And again, thank you, Mr. Rutherford we, Mr. Keelan. We, we do enjoy putting the rodeo on for the city. No, I know you it's, do, and you do a, a great job. Fun. Fantastic. All right. Well, uh, we also have a proclamation uh, on behalf of the city of Brawley. So the proclamation is in honor of Robin Williams Day in the city of Raleigh. And we'd like her to step forward. Yeah, please, Robin. Because she loves to be right? in the forefront. Yes. All right. We love to have her. Right? <laughs> tricky guys, these guys, right? Yeah. They're very yeah. tricky. Yes. In fact, they even said, look, just put it on the agenda as a, as a committee update, keep it simple, and we'll get her up here. So, so everybody's kind of working behind the scenes for you. <laughs> All right, so in honor of Robin Williams Day in the city of Brawley, whereas Robin Williams has spent most of her life in the city of Brawley, devoting her many talents to a broad spectrum of community pursuits, and whereas Robin Williams is passionately committed to the beautification of Brawley, having served on the Brawley Beautification Committee and served as a trusted advisor to our local government, accomplishing aesthetic enhancements at Catacall Park, Plaza Park, the Main Street Median, and the Veterans Wall of Honor, Brawley Police Department and Fire Station Number 2. And whereas Robin Williams is a tireless and fierce advocate for ensuring the improvement, maintenance, and public enjoyment of Catacall Park as a longtime member of the Catacall Rodeo Committee, and whereas Robin Williams oversees the horse boarding facility at Catacall Park and appro approaches all community service challenges with a truly generous spirit. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, George A. Nava, Mayor of the City of Brawley, hereby proclaim April 17, 2018, as Robin Williams Day in the City of Brawley. 
So, Ms. Williams, we have a proclamation for you and a little gift on behalf of the city. You also have a, a, a nice gift on behalf of the uh, Catacall Rodeo. Rodeo Committee. So, if we can please have these items and we'll present them to you. Councilmember Cashman, would you help me, please? Oh, yes. Thank you. So, we'd like to present these items to you. <laughs> so you have your own day. So if you want to give these guys a ticket or anything like that, you can find them. Congratulations. Thank you for all of your work. And, and we have this gift for you. Uh, Council Member Touchman has. And this is an item from the uh, Catacol Committee. So there's a lot of stuff. And this is, you have to check this out. You have to see So this is from your, your friends here. Oh, Mind showing that off to the rest wow. of the uh, audience there? I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Good taste. Fantastic. Good taste. Well deserved. Well deserved. It says uh, BCCR Cattle Call 2017 and my initials REW. Fantastic. Let's give a good round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you for everything you're doing for us and for your community. Thank you. It's a community. The Bronx Cattle Call Rodeo is definitely a huge part of this community. Please share your comments with us, would you? Please. Well, um, the Brawley Cattle Call Rodeo is very important to not only all of Brawley, but to all of us. And we all serve our committee for making Brawley what it is. And we want to bring first class entertainment. And I am so appreciative of this very much. Awesome. again for all that you do for us. Thank you. We appreciate it and I know you have a great fan base as well here. So yeah. congratulations <laughs> to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Wow, it's beautiful. Holy cow, I guess that's appropriate for Yeah. <laughs> well deserved. All right. Congratulations again. You are all right. <laughs> <laughs> They're in trouble. <laughs> They're all in trouble. <laughs> all right. Well, they're all in trouble. Well, that's great. It's great that's to be okay. able to honor somebody for the work that they do for the community. Yes. You know, all these things take place, and I'm sure many people don't realize how much effort and time is put into to catacall activities and everything right. else. They right. just, you know, it happens around them, and they're yeah. not necessarily even sure who takes uh, care of what. And and uh, but it, that's fantastic. I'm glad that it uh, she's being recognized, and it's another great, uh, you know, and all the work that she's done. With, along with the city, you know, out here and, and cleaning up and great honor. So, fantastic. Well, congratulations, Ms. Robin Williams. All right. So, we're going to move on. Is there, uh, before I do though, is there anyone else who would like to make a public appearance or has a comment? <coughs> None? Okay. Well, we'll move on. The next item is the consent agenda, and that's item four. Items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may request consent items be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as written? So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Motion carries. Fantastic. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is uh, regular business it's uh, item five and so it's 5a discussion potential action to approve the sale and consumption of alcohol on city property specifically north plaza park and city streets on april 21st 2018 from 5 p.m to 9 p.m for the taco showdown as requested by the brawley chamber of commerce backup materials on pages 38 through 41 and that's going to be presented by 
Marjo Mello. Mm -hmm. In what capacity are you in? Today this, it's this library and Parks and Rec right now, right? Yes, so, I, yeah. Parks and Rec was the first half of my day. Library was the afternoon, and now I'm back to Parks and Rec. Okay, sure. back to Parks and Rec. Okay. And, and I should say Pat Dorsey, and then then I wouldn't have to talk, mm -hmm. but that's okay. This event on Friday night should be absolutely great fun. They're going to is, they're going to have lucha libre. Lucha libre, yeah. Yeah, lucha libre, tacos. Um, beer and a whole bunch of other good stuff going on. All right. Okay. So, and this Saturday night. I'm sorry. Saturday. Saturday, 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 Saturday night. Saturday. Night. Yeah. Okay. Twenty first. So uh, 21st. the request yeah. is to approve the sale and consumption of alcohol on city property. All right. So is there a motion to approve this item, or are there any questions for Marjo on this particular? I make topic? a motion to approve the item. All right. I'll second the motion. So there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I oppose. Okay. Motion carries. All right, thank you. And everybody come have fun. Thank you. Gotcha. And the reason for your opposition? Uh, it's because the alcohol sales. That's okay. All. I don't, I don't, you know, uh, I, I'm not stopping anyone from consuming sure. alcohol. I just, I have a, a, my own aversion and conviction to it. I think there is, there's plenty of evidence to show that that alcohol is probably does more damage to families and to cities than than good. That's my only reason for uh, voting nay on on alcohol sales. I understand. I would just uh, make one comment um, with respect to that. As city council members, we often are encounter we encounter items that we have to uh, support for the greater benefit of the community. And so we're here to represent the community as a whole. And sometimes our own personal beliefs may go against that. Sure. I would just. Uh, right. for you to consider that in the future so right and that's the only reason I say I think there's there's evidence to show that that alcohol consumption and alcoholism causes more damage to families and communities than good that is why I, I feel that I I have the the grounds to vote nay on on public alcohol sales but be that as it may obviously I will always be in the minority on that and that's okay all right <clears throat> well thank you Next item on the agenda is regular business 5B, discussion potential action to approve first reading of ordinance number 2018 ordinance of the City Council of the City of Brawley, amending City of Brawley ordinance number 438 pertaining to persons authorized to ride on fire apparatus. The backup material is on pages 42 through 45. That's going to be presented by our fire chief, Mr. Chuck Braza. Honorable Mayor, uh, fellow uh, council members, Chuck Braza. Uh, fire chief. So what we have uh, before you today is a change for ordinance ordinance 438. Currently on our books, what we have is that anybody not connected with the fire department can not ride on the apparatus unless we bring it to you as a city council for the approval. Um, an LSR was drafted to our city attorney. Um, he drew up the language change for the ordinance, which is in your backup. Um, this language change will require the fire chief uh, under his discretion to make that um, approval without having to take it to city council fantastic and that was really the process before and so fantastic all right and so is there any questions on this particular item from council as backup just, material do we have a photo we can we can show oh yeah there we go there's a, there's a, right there's a photo right, right there oh. yep. and this is actually a we had a community member give us this picture. It's a great picture. And um, it was of the other day when the uh, wrestlers came through here. So fantastic. So, so but you had a question. I'm sorry. I just had a question. I, I'm, so with the picture and everything, it says that every person will have to sign this written liability waiver. And I guess that's okay for adults. But what will we do about the children from Broad Union High School or other children that might ride? So any children under the age of 18, the parents have to sign. They will have to sign, yes. and so it's very important that, that people in the community realize that and that they get that request in early because to get everybody to sign could be a little bit daunting in that, a short correct. notice. And so that's exactly what we did with the wrestling team. All the right. parents had signed for them. That's good. It, it okay. has been our practice uh, to utilize risk management um, processes along the way. We just wanted to make sure that the ordinance reflects, reflects what our practice is. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. That's the only question I have. My mother signed all my permission slips. Well, I know, so did mine, but I just want to make sure they have enough time to do that. 
<laughs> no, and actually, I think uh, one of the parents called me the, the other day when we had that presentation, and they said they were all required to sign away. Right, right. yes, yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Okay. So is there, an, uh, is there a motion to approve the item? So oh. moved. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second? All right. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank your help. All right. So the next item is 5C, discussion and potential action to adopt a social media status of limited public forum for the city of Brawley backup materials on pages 46 and 47. And I know we've discussed it previously. And presenting this will be Shirley Bonias. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, Shirley Benias, Personnel and Risk Management. Pages 46 through 47 is the staff report. It is, um, we're asked seeking council direction on the status of our social media. As explained in the staff report, there's three different ways. No discussion, no postings, a limited forum, which uh, city manager and staff is recommending and then there's open discussion. Uh, for us to be able to take any comments off the website, and it is the recommendation of our risk management insurance pool to go in a limited forum capacity. Uh, just an update on the policies themselves, I have took the liberty to go ahead and write them that way, and they are ready for uh, city attorney review as soon as I can get that piece of paper off my desk. So All right. that's the status of those policies. Thank you. Just need your direction tonight, if I may, please. All right. So are there any questions with respect to this uh, particular uh, uh, policy? So this would make it to where it's mostly information. We're just putting out information of events or, or happenings within the city. And if, if someone makes a, uh, an inappropriate comment, then with this uh, status, then you're able to pull those without violating the I don't know. First Amendment. First Amendment. First yeah. Amendment. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got to protect the First Amendment. As city attorney says, we just can't get around that. Yeah. Um, that is my understanding, sir. Yes. And is that something that has to be posted on yes. the page itself, is yeah. that there is the ability to pull comments? Right. Uh, city, I will be more than happy to send to the city manager the city, I'm pretty sure it was city of Lakewood, has that exactly. When you go on their Facebook page, that's what pops up. Okay. It's a multi-page, it's about six or eight pages long, but all of it goes on there so they know exactly what their rights are, what our rights are, what we will do if we see something that's inappropriate for the Facebook page. And everything will steer back to our web page, our websites. Very well. Any other questions on this particular topic? Is there a motion to approve the item? I'll also move. There's a motion. Is there second. a second? There's a second. All right. Any further discussion? Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is regular business 5D discussion staff direction regarding it's a presentation by City Council uh, City Council Norms and Procedures Committee, and that is uh, consists of Council Member Norma kastner howdigie and Mayor Pro Tem Donnie Wharton. He is not here, so we'll hear from. Uh, you, you don't want to wait till it's here. It's up to you. Let's just continue. Yeah. Let's continue. <coughs> okay. Thank you. We can do, this is a presentation. Just a little background on this. A uh, few meetings back, uh, uh, our Mayor, Mr. Nava, assigned myself and uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Donald Wharton to form this ad hoc committee and take a look at our norms and procedures and uh, see if there was any items in there um, that we may want to change or amend and maybe add some things to our norms and procedures based on a conversation that we had had during a council meeting uh, questioning the, uh, the appointment of the mayor and the mayor pro tem. So Mayor, uh, mayor pro tem uh, Donnie Wharton and I have met uh, several meetings and uh, came up with some, upon reviewing uh, several other cities, norms and procedures, uh, de determined that there were a few items that we wanted to add to ours. And these are the additions that we came up with. Our plan is to share these with you today. And if you have any questions, um, you know, we're more than happy to answer them. Or if you feel there needs to be more clarification or anything else. 
And then our plan is to go ahead and incorporate this into our norms and procedures and give you the clean copy and then the edited copy for review and approval at a future meeting. So the first part of it is the role of, of council members. We found that there wasn't too much in, uh, in our co current copy of the norms and procedures. So these are the items that we wanted to add. Um, most of it is, is probably what you would consider common sense or more, most of us already know what our uh, duties and responsibilities are for council members, but uh, it never hurts to have them in <coughs> writing. And also for newly appointed council members, we think it's a very good resource and also for uh, just a refresher, sometimes you need to go back. So um, I'll just go through them and if you want to stop me or, you know, no, no problem, just go ahead. The first part was uh, the role of the council members. Uh, items that we want to add are high level summary of council member responsibilities. City council members are collectively responsible for establishing policy, adopting the annual budget, providing vision and setting goals for the city manager. And then the following briefly outlines a generic list of various duties. Approve and amend the operating and capital budgets. Approve contracts and purchase orders. Adopt <coughs> resolutions. Adopt ordinances. Supervise and evaluate appointed officials, which include the city manager, the city attorney, and the city clerk. <coughs> the, the one item I would uh, comment on with respect to the city clerk, in the city of Brawley, the city clerk is also our records administrator, right. and that position reports directly to the city manager. So that would be the only difference there. That's <coughs> correct. Uh, so I'm not sure um, as her duties as a city clerk, we're allowed to, um, or how to her, du maybe. her duties as city clerk are her elected role. Right. Her duties as record administrator, she reports to the city manager. Um, so I uh, am responsible for her evaluation. Okay. So are council members able to give input to you as far as any uh, part that would fall under the city clerk? Glad to receive feedback, not on the city clerk, on the records administrator. City clerk, she uh, is functions as an elected official just as any member of the city council. Okay. Any, any more clarification on that? Need no. it? No, I think we're clear on that. We would provide you with input if we had any uh, for your evaluation. Okay. Uh, continuing is establish advisory boards and commissions and as such provide direction to such boards, committees, and commissions. Represent the city's interests at regional, county, state, and federal levels. Most of our it, representation is not at federal level. But would you move forward on the... On oh, I'm the, sorry. Yeah. Please, thank you. <laughs> okay, there we are. Represent the city's interests at regional, county, state, and federal levels. And down at the bottom, uh, we added... Um, our particular code <coughs> for Chapter 21A.6 of the Brawley Municipal Code, the City Council action is required for expenditures in excess of $15,000. So the City Manager has the authority to spend up to $15,000. Anything over that would have to come to our, to our City Council. Okay, and we move on to role of City Staff. City staff will provide written analysis and information on all agenda items prior to the meetings. Additionally, a copy of the materials, including technical reports, will be available to the public. Staff will be available to answer questions of the City Council prior to and during the City Council meetings. Staff will respond to questions from the public during the, council meeting, during the City Council meetings when requested to do so by the City Council or City Manager. Participation on nonprofit boards of directors and conflicts of interest. We didn't find anything in ours, and so we felt this item also needed to be added. It shall be the policy of this council that members of the city council should not serve as members of the board of directors of a nonprofit corporation which is receiving or is reasonably likely in the future to seek and or receive funding from the city of Raleigh as to avoid any appearance of a conflict of interest. I, the comment I would yes. have is that we are appointed um, on behalf of the city council. Members. As an example, uh, council member Couchman serves on the Raleigh Chamber of Commerce board, so I think there needs to be clarification as to how that uh, will work with that policy. We also are represented on a lot of different on commissions, multiple, right. commissions, and also I think we do right. belong in IBDC some cases and to, others. Uh -huh. to some nonprofit organization. Right. 
we may serve on some boards um, like some of them, some of the ones that we serve on are not likely to receive funding from the city of Brawley, but if we buy a ticket to their event, then they're receiving funding. If we're on their, in their organization or, or serve on their board, then we would also be receiving that funding. So I don't know if we don't need to clarify that a little bit. Was the intent of this particular item um, to address kind of dual roles that could be problematic? when the council is seated as um, city council and then asked to put on a different hat? Uh, because some of the examples that are referenced, for instance, like the Imperial County Transportation Commission, it's a, it's a governmental entity. Right, there correct. are a lot of uh, board seats that are occupied by city designees that are J the JPA bodies that we participate in. And I'm curious, with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, are you considered uh, a voting member in the same way as any other board member currently? You yes. are. You are. Yes. But, um, has a, and I'm not aware if any council member has ever served as an executive committee board member at the chamber. I don't do that, but I mean, uh -huh. I do serve. So as, as, I serve it. as the city's yeah, representative yeah. to the mm -hmm. chamber of commerce, but I also serve on the board of the Stockman's Club, and I also serve on others. Now, I guess in that respect, I don't expect the Stockman's Club to receive a lot of city money, but occasionally there will be an event where the Stockman's Club may receive money from us because of an indirect or because of something that goes on there. I would think that I would just be able to, if, if we were in any kind of situation where the Stockman's Club was to receive a large amount of money from the city, that I would just excuse myself from that and, or recuse myself from that and not vote on that issue. Maybe we could look a little. We need to at this probably area. look yeah, into look this at one that. a little bit more because more. I don't think we and had thought of uh, those particular yeah. examples that you've just uh, posed. Right. Or, or so we may, or we may be involved in, or the in a film board of a church, as an example. Or, or we may or be involved in a religious no, yeah. uh, organization, yeah. Yeah. or the film commission, or NOCA, or, or yeah. NOCA. Yeah. The NOCA uh, that's another one. Or you know, there's a lot of other sure. little things. Like I'm. If I'm we can a, revisit the topic, ABC. maybe to consider. Okay. I think I understand yeah. the the concept behind it. Um, I just I think we need clarification. Maybe we can add a recusal. Right. I'm on an advisory board for the Brawl Union High School. Now that's quasi governmental, so that's a little different. But there's a whole bunch of. Sure. Or I'm treasurer of the Coin Club. I mean, I don't anticipate that the Coin Club would receive a lot of money from the city. But I mean. Do you handle yeah. money on the Coin Club? We all may the time. have to. Yeah, we'll have to look into this. <laughs> Maybe the city could be get more than the I'll too. be happy to look into it because this does say should not serve as members, and I can see just from the conversation that there's a lot where we would serve but have to recuse ourselves, yeah. maybe, but not necessarily not be able to serve. So uh, we'll look into this. I, I think as a small community, we tend to get I more involved be. in those kind but of things, whereas larger communities, such as large cities and stuff, they may not have the right. same kind of. And, and we, we probably need to dig a little deeper in there just because as an example like on the film commission I have been on the executive board right and so you know we have to make sure and we we support the film and commission. we give them so some funding right uh -huh. so funds. but I, I think I understand okay. the, the comment okay I'll, I'll be more than happy to follow up on that okay okay let's see the next one is um, City Council conduct with the media uh, city council members should never go off the record to discuss information pertaining to closed session personnel, litigation, or acquisition of property when dealing with the media or members of the public. And I think that's pretty much understood. But I think I it's, it's good to have it yeah, there. Yeah. We've had that issue in the past where we have closed session items and the conversation, of course, closed sessions should remain in closed session, and that's... Uh, you know, really protected uh, conversations yes. we have. And I, I know in the past, um, you know, those conversations have come to light in the public yeah. arena. So I think reminder. it's good to put it in writing. Council member and city manager communication. Council members and staff who participate in meetings with outsiders should be apprised of any follow-up correspondence to that party with the exception of sensitive topics. And I'm waiting, I'm pausing only because Rosanna had a comment about that one, so I'm not sure if anybody uh, else has a... Uh, yeah, my, my question um, to Council Member um, Howdigy was um, the terminology of outsiders. Do you want to be CC'd on everything? Do you want to be CC'd on particularly... I, it, this excludes sensitive topics. It would seem to me that sensitive topics are probably of greatest interest, but... Um, my concern is always flooding everybody's inboxes. If you sure. wish to have lots of correspondence, happy to have it with you. Um, but if not, need kind of help understanding what are the screens that are most important to you so you stay 
informed. Right, and I think well, the, uh, we also have to consider the, the, the type of information that you're sharing. And, you know, I know some of it's protected, um, you know, uh, attorney client privilege and those sorts of things, but I think we can revisit that item, okay. I think. Some, some of it's more yeah, clarification. Do you need more clarification on this so, one? I think so. Okay. With, with a lot of, you know, reply all or CC, I think there's, there's some potential Brown Act issues there, right? On there, certain yes, subjects. There, there, there could be. If there's a response by multiple there's and giving direction, yeah. responses. Also, okay. that term outsiders, is that a, is that a technical term or for, for the setting or no? Pony boy, outsiders. I just. Maybe we need to change seems that a to pejorative. something a little bit more, we'll change a little that. bit um, more uh, uh, graceful. So, yeah, maybe, some know. of it. Well, like I said, some of this we borrowed from other cities, right, right. Um, and um, and some of it we kind of changed the wording, but uh, in, in some cases we didn't. So that may be one that we need to probably so look at. Be meeting with external audience. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it would be so more like good. our person's not aligned with city government or something like that. I mean, where you're not. Where, where you don't have somebody, it's, it says council members or staff, so it's anybody that's not a council member or a staff, and that's what you're really referring to, so. Okay, we'll follow up on that one also. If there is, if there is potential controversy, council members and city managers should get copied on all correspondence. The city manager will communicate with council members via the following methods, weekly, bi-weekly status report, council member interaction report, text messaging for urgent or time sensitive matters available for in-person meetings. And I'm not sure what that page five edition is. I'll probably delete that off of there. I'm not sure what that was. Um, but I think you're already communicating with us um, in, yeah. in this respect, so. Um, I notice, and, and Norma, I apologize because I know we met to discuss this too. I, phone calls are excluded. I assume you're not opposed to receiving phone calls if, are, if they're necessary. Right. I think, yeah. and then and that's one item that I did want to bring up uh, okay. with respect to sometimes the best way to communicate is by phone, just to g deliver the information, um, especially on sensitive matters uh, that you don't want forwarded along, you know, whether that's a personnel matter or something that's occurred within the city. I think, uh, you know, phone call is, is the most appropriate method. Yeah. No, no, I'll make a note of that. That should be on there. Okay. And then the council member a member interaction <coughs> report is that one, um, uh, council member? How do you that, that maybe you could describe a little bit more? I I know we talked about it, but I think it's important that the rest of the council. Um, okay. What too. the meaning behind that one is that there's many times that, and I think that that was something that I raised uh, a few meetings back, is that many times there's not an opportunity to to talk to all the council members, but there may be something important that that you might have addressed or a council member brought to your attention that we, the rest of the council, needs to be um, aware of or informed of, and that's what that, that's really pertaining to council member in interaction report. Information only. It, nothing that would, uh, could possibly violate the Brown Act, it's just information. So if I um, work on a particular subject matter, the intent is always to brief all, so all have the chance to be privy to the same information. Correct. Correct. Got it. Okay. Anything else? We're okay. Okay. Okay, and this one is actually the one that uh, started this whole conversation. Uh, mayoral and mayoral pro tem selection and rotation. Um, we added um, a section to this. We did have this addressed, obviously, in our norms and procedures, but we um, added an, another section to it. Um, it starts out with the mayor and mayor pro tem are selected among the. Oops. Oops. I don't know what. Oh, okay. The mayor and mayor <laughs> pro tem. Playing with, he's playing over there. What, what are, you doing? Uh, are selected uh, among there. the presiding city. Past practice has provided for the transition to take place annually during the month of November or December following election, if applicable. And normally our election is in November or December, so that would be the time that, that this would take place. The mayor pro tem position is rotated each year. The mayor pro tem becomes a mayor, except when the mayor pro tem does not run or is not reelected. That's pretty well understood. The position of mayor follows a sequence based on A, election date, and B, order of finish within each election. This is the part that was added. And there's an example there. Example, the third place vote recipient 
in the 2015 election would become mayor before the top vote recipient of the 2017 election. There have been no exceptions made for seniority or for first time mayor pro tems. And <coughs> we just added that part in there. This was taken um, off of the Be Beverly Hills Council model, but there's various other cities that have the same the same model. Uh, so so it is the same procedure. model that we have been following within the city? Actually, what I understood is this is the model that the city mm -hmm. of Raleigh had, had been following, but it had not been put in writing, so we thought it was necessary to be put it in writing. I have a comment on that. Um, I, I had looked through some other cities' uh, mayoral rotation procedures, and one I got from the city of Del Mar has to do with um, appointments uh, to the city council in lieu of an election. It says, in the event there are members of the city council appointed in lieu of an election, the appointed city council members will go into mayoral rotation based on tenure or seniority on the city council. The city council member with the most tenure on the city council will be placed first in the rotation of that group. If no seniority exists, e.g. members have the same tenure, then the appointed city council members will be rotated based on a coin toss conducted at a publicly noticed meeting. So, so in the case of, a, of an appointment, um, rather than um, rather than maintaining the seat, uh, the position of that seat, the appointment goes to the bottom of the list of the rotation, and it seems like that that has probably caused controversy in the past, and it might be a good idea to to add that in to our norms and procedures. We have followed the the appointed seat, so but either I mean whatever can be thought of mm -hmm. and whatever council agrees to would be appropriate, I believe. So, so you develop a bullet around so that, look at whatever that, that process yeah, take a look at that. Yeah. Maybe talk and and that was from what city? That's Del Mar. Del Mar. Okay. And then it's come down to coin tosses. It has, but I don't like it. Okay, and then we just, uh, this one, we just decided to add it also just for clarity uh, because I think it's also come up uh, seating on the dais, dais? Dais. Dais. I, I, I used to call it dais, but mm -hmm. I don't, thought I, somebody said dais. dais, so I'm not sure. Is it dais, dais or dais? dais. Okay. Dais. Okay, see, seating on the dais, dais is within the direction, di I'm sorry, discretion of the mayor based on seniority following the rotation established for the position of mayor. Protocol dictates Mayor Pro Tem sits to the right of the mayor as viewed from the audience. Previous mayor will be seated to the left of the mayor, well, we're which all you are. Up there. Higher seniority <laughs> council member to the left of the outgoing Unless mayor. Unless you look at it from the audience. And the first seat there. position next to the podium is the newest council member. So as you can see, we're following this this particular oh, yeah. process. That's, that's for the from the audience viewed, looking yeah, in. The okay. Audience. As viewed uh, from the audience. Yeah, I'm thinking looking out there. No, I'm I on think the, the right. hardest one to understand is the second to last, highest, higher, higher of the two, not the newest, but and not the outgoing mayor, not the immediate prior mayor, not the mayor pro tem, and not the current mayor. <laughs> Right? Which would be me, the higher seniority right. council member. Higher seniority <laughs> council member to the left of the outgoing mayor. Which is Sam. Which is Sam. Outgone mayor. Right? Because you're going to be outgoing I'm at some you're point. Be is that the outgoing? So that well, messes the word. Kind of messes that, that, that kind of is messes that. Is that a word? That. Out, outgone. <laughs> Immediate past. <laughs> maybe we should change that. That, that, maybe a, maybe that, that might be a little bit confusing. Okay, my apologies. Immediate past. We, we know the That's reason funny. why that person's sitting yes. there because it's easier for the audience to get to them. <laughs> I said we, so we already know that. I mean, that way. You know, I said we just play <laughs> Duck, Duck, Goose. <laughs> but Musical it, it actually had come up before, so we just thought it was a good idea to put it in writing. And ultimately, though, I guess it's still at the discretion of the mayor. So if the mayor were to decide that he didn't want he Sam sitting want next to him, yeah. we've, had that <laughs> we've had that happen before. Yes, oh, I can say that? Yeah, yeah, I think we've Same had that happen before, no, yes. <laughs> okay, well, that was the last page did that happen. I had. Um, I did make some notes of some things that uh, we need to take back. And uh, then we'll bring it back to council. Cool. Fantastic. Cool. We'll very nice. Thank forward. you very much. Very Thank you for the presentation. All right. <laughs> and happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Did you get to do the whole discussion? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
So that was f item 5D. Thank you again for your presentation. I appreciate the work that you put into that. Uh, the next is uh, discussion, uh, excuse me, it's uh, item 5E, uh, discussion and potential action to accept the City of Raleigh's annual planning report and status of the general pa plan 2017. Back up, uh, materials on pages 58 through 75 is going to be presented by Mr. Gordon Gaist. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, Gordon Gaze Planning Director. Uh, this is our annual report. Uh, we do it every year, and this time it's required by the government code. Just gives a summary of the planning activity that's happened in the past year, in the past calendar year. These are uh, for calendar years. Uh, and uh, also includes the uh, housing element portion of the general plan progress report in tables and how much of the uh, regional housing need assessments numbers that we've attained uh, that was established at the beginning of the housing element cycle for the seven year cycle. And we are already starting to begin with SCAG to uh, get ready for the next cycle. We already had a couple preliminary workshops and uh, we'll be uh, getting further into it. I think the last couple of times uh, they were a little optimistic on the numbers. Uh, you know, the, the recession hit and uh, everything kind of fell apart and the number, nobody achieved their numbers uh, for the, the last one and even this one was a little optimistic. So I think this time they're being a little more, they're going to try to be a little more conservative and realistic on, on what's going to be uh, uh, the, the correct numbers that should be in each category. Uh, let's say that'll come up probably in, the, uh, well, it has to be adopted by 2021. So it'll be coming to you with the new housing element and the new numbers uh, in another couple of years. Okay. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for the information. I just have a couple, a couple of questions, Mr. Mayor. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't have a page number, but on um, Roman numeral seven, land use permits. Yes. Just information. Um, you have there the major, major subdivision, with a few exceptions. Say major subdivision, the division of five or more lots. And yes. During the 2017. Planning Department Process 2. Can you tell us which ones those are? Yes, uh, it was the, the re-entitled of, uh, re-entitlement re of Victoria Park. And the other one was an eight lot subdivision on A Street. On the south part of A Street, mid-block between uh, Northeastern Avenue and North Best Avenue. Okay. Just want to interrupt, uh, if our city clerk can note that uh, Mayor Pro Tem Donnie Wharton has joined the meeting. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. And um, and then the, the minor subdivision? That was the one on uh, River Drive. Again, where the old stiff equipment was, again, pretty much mid-block between Northeastern Avenue <coughs> and uh, North Best Avenue. Okay. Any other questions on this particular item? Is there a motion Are to we, accept? Oh, just one, one sure. other one. Um, on the Section 8 with the gen general plan update. It talks about a climate action plan. It has been completed, uh, ready for adoption. Is Will you be bringing that forward for us to review or and approve, or how, how does that work? At, at, the, at the council's direction, it, it is ready to go. We did get a grant to do that several years ago. Um, I have the environment. It's a pretty much a self-mitigating document in terms of our environmental, but I have the, the neg negative declaration ready to go. Uh, it's ready to be adopted at any time that the, at the pleasure of the council if, if they so choose to move forward. I would be happy to uh, disseminate a draft copy of that document. It is available as a link on the city website under the planning tab, but mm -hmm. I, I will send it to all of you so you have it nice and easy to access. And we are uh, prepared to move forward if that is the wish of the council. Okay. Right. And, and a note, on, we are also going to be required to adopt an environmental justice uh, 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 element to the general plan too. Uh, I've already been working on that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The general plan, these are just policies. They're, they're not an ordinance. They're not laws. They are just directions that uh, the cities, all, you, you know, and it can be minimal, just what the state requires you to do, or you can add on to it if you'd like. Sure. Um, I think, you know, the way we did the climate action plan, we didn't overdo it. And we're not trying to put any new restrictions on any anybody, any businesses, or even the city ourselves for when we, uh, you know, purchase new vehicles or, or you know, re rehabilitate a building. It's just that you do have to have the plan in, 
place right. by it's by just state a requirement law. right certainly all right is there a motion to accept the city of Brawley's annual planning report and status so moved there's a motion. second there's a second any discussion all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. any opposed motion carries thank you thank you the next item on the agenda is uh, item 5F. It's discussion and staff direction regarding a letter of support for AB 1885, California Resident Work Program and Economic Stabilization Act. There's backup material on pages 76 through 78. And this was, uh, I believe, a request from our assembly member's office. Correct. And uh, anything you'd like to add to that, uh, our city uh, manager? I do want to note for council's benefit uh, that I, did, I reached out to both Collab and the Imperial County Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. uh, Collab, as uh, part of its uh, regular activities, reviews, legislative support or opposition in the May-June window. I think I saw Ms. Percola here. Yes. Uh, so they have not yet taken a position on this I also had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Mohammed at the Imperial County Farm Bureau uh, she indicated that she uh, brought this particular piece of uh, legislation to the attention of her executive committee uh, a couple of months ago uh, they didn't have a strong um, interest in support or opposition uh, she did reach out to the California Farm Bureau Federation um, as a result of my contact with her at the time that she had taken it in February to our executive committee, they had not signed on. It's listed as a support entity um, in the fact sheet that's in her backup. Um, she <coughs> said in general, her observations, she'll, she'll take it back to the, the Farm Bureau's executive committee to see if they uh, might think of this in a different way or, or stay the course and not uh, get involved. But her impression generally was that it's a crossover uh, of a, a federal matter. And so it's it's the orientation, um, as she described it, was the state attempting to influence a federal matter. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that's all the information that I have relative to uh, how local stakeholders may uh, view this uh, topic. Uh, we did want to honor the wishes of our assembly sure. member and have it uh, available to the council should the council wish to take action um, on it and direct the preparation of a letter of support. I have a question. I'm not sure if you know the answer, um, but with respect to a time frame, is there a particular time frame where this letter of support would need to be um, provided? Uh, one has not been communicated to the city. Okay. Um, at, at, as of this time, uh, they were advised that we had the item scheduled for tonight's uh, session. Right. Any interest on council? We can table the item to see if there's greater input. Yeah. Question here? Well, I'd like, I think I'd like to table it until we get additional input on it. It's interesting to note that in the um, backup that's given on background from Eduardo Garcia, on the background of this, and it's just interesting to note on the last paragraph section uh, number three, uh, they're going to have a working group from this legislation that presents a framework to the governor. And if the governor decides to move on the recommendation of the working group, which is what this mm -hmm. legislation establishes, and ask for permission from the federal government to implement the program, I think under the circumstances at this point in time, I don't think they're going to get a lot of permission granted from the federal government unless something changes very drastically within the state of California. I think... Um, but I don't think that it's necessary for us to take a position at this point in time. I think we could get some additional information, see if there's some feeling at the federal government that they would support something of this, of this type of activity. I think probably in reality it may be that farm, that the farmers and that the farm things need this farm labor. Because yeah. I think there, is, there are some shortages of, of farm so labor probably throughout the country. Uh, so maybe the federal government and the state need to get together, the states need to get together and work on this issue and maybe do something rather than an advisory type thing, which I think this really yeah, kind of more reflects. I don't think I need all that much information, but I would just say I would be supportive if, uh, you know, the the local farm bureaus in support, I'm, I'm in support as well. I think I would you know, go so. along with that. If, if it's felt it's needed for the local economy, then certainly I could support it, but I'm not sure we have enough information on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I would agree that we don't. We don't have enough info at this point. Perfect. All right. Let's table the item. We'll revisit it at a future date. How about that? Excellent. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, 
Discussion potential action to reschedule the special city council meeting on May 15, 2018. And this item I'm bringing before you, I had had a conversation with council member Kastner Howdigy in the past. She had mentioned to me that she may be out, well, in fact, that she will be out uh, during our next, uh, or excuse me, on the May 15th meeting. And after uh, viewing my schedule, I will also be out at that time. So that'll take two uh, council members out of the uh, meeting. So I wanted to see if there's an option to maybe reschedule the meeting for a later date in the month and uh, just uh, up for consideration to see if we can reschedule a, sp a special city council meeting on May, uh, from the May 15th date to possibly, you know, something in, in the, following, uh, the following week. No, Mr. Mayor, just confirming the 15th would be, um, is it a special meeting because it's we're also doing it's the budget a special process, meeting. but it, it's still it a regular scheduled, scheduled meeting? We had it, it's special because it would start at 4 p.m. as okay. opposed to 6, and the goal was to have uh, to have it open with the enterprise and special enterprise. funds workshop and then okay. followed by business items. Okay. Would, would the following, it's okay. one of those months with, uh, there's actually Several. five Tuesdays, right? It's a, I, I'm, the I'm open one. on the 21st and 22nd. That's a Monday and Tuesday. I have other meetings on the 22nd. Okay. okay. In the evening. I'll be out of town the 21st and 22nd. I see oh. it will be. Okay. What about the following I'm week? currently open right now on, the, on both of those days. What, what about, uh, yeah, let's check to see if, is there, there what about well, Memorial Day is the 28th, so what about oh. the 29th? What about the 29th? For the 29th people? is. That, would that, that, that would work? work better yes. for me. And I think for staff it would work as well because they would give them a little bit more time to prepare for the special meeting. Is that? I appreciate the okay. extra time. Would that work for everybody? That works for yes. me. Luke, would that work for yeah, you? That's the 29th and, and what on Tuesday. And what time are you thinking? Uh, should we, we keep okay? it the same? Yeah, yeah, at four. To start early because it's going to take us a while. Okay. Done. Yeah. Everybody. I, it's looking okay. good. Yeah. I'm just double checking here. Yeah. So we'll update all of the um, the posted yeah, budget we'll calendars, and we do have um, some individuals who've expressed interest mm -hmm. in participating in this conversation as community members. So yes. we'll let them. And we have also. a meeting on Monday also. This Monday coming is Monday. our general fund workshop. Yes, very important meeting, and that starts at um, Monday's five. meeting is scheduled to start at five. So we're looking at the twenty-eighth. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yes. Would that be at four p.m.? The twenty-ninth. Yeah, the twenty-ninth at four p.m. Yeah, four or five, whatever you wish. Four. Four. Um, Would that work for four, everybody? That work yes. for yeah. everybody? Yeah. All right. So it's been set at. Uh, uh, the meeting from the 15th, the special meeting will be moved to the 29th at 4 p.m. here in the council chambers. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So uh, I make a motion. I'll make a motion uh, to reschedule the May 15th meeting to May 29th at 4 p.m. here. I'll second. There's a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all very much. I appreciate that. I'm sure Council Member Norma Kessler. Yes, I appreciate that very That's much. Better Thank for you. Everybody, to have everybody here. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy <laughs> birthday, <laughs> yes. Happy birthday. Just look at that one more year yeah. to that. Hey, we, we sang year. happy Every birthday. We that, it's a year recognized her like five Boy, times. By the time yeah. I walk out of here, I don't know. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a year <laughs> added on every time. I know. <laughs> <it's a birthday. laughs> hey, no, you know what? Let, let's put uh, Council Member Mayor Pro Tem Wharton on. Can he sing happy He's birthday? gonna have to sing he it by himself because he missed it. So you're gonna. Sing. That's okay, Donnie. You don't. Happy birthday <laughs> to I, I do you. not want to upset her. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, there you go. Uh, what a <laughs> no, we we actually had the whole room uh, sing a happy birthday. Right. So it was pretty so cool. It was great. All right. So the next item on the agenda is departmental reports. Six A reminder of the community cleanup day on April 28th from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Brawley Municipal Airport. By Guillermo Sias, Public Works Director, City Engineer. Is this he is here? simply a reminder. I believe we have uh, have Guillermo here, but it was just to remind everyone that at the end of this month we'll so throw all your stuff uh, have away. the airport open. Fantastic. And I, I think uh, if you could just give us a little recap. I know in the past there had been some logistical challenges there, but I think they found a way to, to be able to unload different items uh, separately. Is that right? Yes, it's correct, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, members uh, of the Council, Guillermo Sillas, Public Works Director. Uh, just to remind you that uh, the route will be uh, from Main Street along Eastern Avenue to the north and then to the east or right at Jones to get access to the airport on King Bimis Drive. Drive uh -huh. And that's for regular vehicles. 
and for the one with um, trailers or heavy loads will be they will continue to the east along Jones and they will make a right or going to the south on this road uh, on the wrong direction let's say they will be on the opposite side of the normal traffic mm -hmm. uh, but it will be closed so th there won't be any problem and there will be an unloading zone between Jones and immediate uh, to River Drive there will be a loading there and they will incorporate again to the southbound going south um, for exit. Um, so there will be plenty of um, signs, device, traffic control devices, so for the public to know exactly what is the route. There will be um, changeable message boards on uh, Main Street, so they will be uh, well informed more on how to get Perfect. to the place. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, good. thank you for the update, and I know we've had a lot more success uh, recently than uh, I know there were some challenges in the past. So thank you very much. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. Any questions from council on this item? No. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Our city treasurer. I saw our city treasurer come in. Anything to report, city treasurer? No, nothing to report. Okay, nothing to report. And city council member reports, and we'll start with item 8A, and that's Mayor Pro Tem Donnie Wharton regarding Volunteer Park Snack Bar AC and Brawley Little League concerns. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just using the um, council report um, form, just had a recent um, communication with a couple members of the Little League, some of the parents that are involved with the board there. And um, um, just, just to back up just a bit, um, first and foremost, as the season was starting, they had a little issue with the window not being able to close and secure because it was uh, broken and uh, I know um, the city staff and city manager were very responsive when that came up and we, we were able to kind of rectify that. Um, unfortunately, along with that, just recently, um, the air, con air conditioning is having a problem. So um, I know we have some budget issues that it, it wasn't as simple as the city manager or staff being able to handle it like a typical city facility. So the hope is, and I know there's more of a story, I'm just keeping it simple. <laughs> Um, of maybe how it got that way, but I know the air conditioning units, uh, it is a bit dated. I think it's getting on like 12 years and just like everything, um, I think the condenser or something is, is, is what's not working. Um, so needless to say, there's an expenditure of, uh, could be anywhere from a couple thousand. I know I have one proposal here just to repair the current um, air condition and it would take about $2,000, maybe 2,000 plus. But then you start getting into the area of w wouldn't it make more sense maybe to replace the air condition versus just repairing it and then maybe have some other Thing component around, break right. down um, a year from now. So yeah. um, again, as a matter of process, I, I, what, what I'm endeavoring to do is really to <coughs> staff just seeing if we can somehow get this handled. They're right in the thick of things as, as to the use of that park in, in terms of Little League. And it does prohibit their ability to operate the snack bar keep product in there keep it from melting as we get into the you know coming weeks months um, bear in mind it goes all the way in through um, all-star so baseball season doesn't just you know it, it continues July, right? on well into into the summer months so um, it, it's not a personal thing it's just I, 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 I agree that I would want to bubble it up maybe to council on if we have some kind of direction or support I know there it, it all comes down to budget right um, um, so as it stands our parks and recreation budget is in uh, um, zero is zeroed out for maintenance activities, supplies and materials, and, and we've only booked expenses through February. So we have several more months in the fiscal year. Um, staff and I are working to prepare a budget adjustment for Parks and Recreation and for the Council's consideration that's, that includes several emerging and, and time sensitive uh, improvements. We're hopeful that with the Council's support, we can move forward with corrections rapidly. Um, our intent was to bring it to the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, I don't know if we can possibly place that on the general fund workshop agenda <coughs> that I'll post. That yeah. might be another. That might be the time to do it. To yeah. accelerate it, if we can get the numbers together, um, I, I will share. I think some of the values are going to be a little shocking, um, <laughs> but of, they're part of, of some of the other. Yes, mm -hmm. of, of the, yes. the values in total. Including addressing some areas that have uh, real demands in the summertime that are large numbers mm -hmm. of individuals that right. we, we serve as participants. So, mm -hmm. um, happy to have that item. If if you're open to receiving it uh, at the general fund workshop, we can do a quick yeah. business I item, and then hopefully, 
uh, move on to the larger sure. scale policy discussion. Is yeah. there anything that can be done in that meantime? I mean, it is getting warmer. We're in the process of getting quotes. Um, and I think as recently as today, Mr. Green was uh, trying to figure out how he could uh, minimize some of uh, the costs associated with the solution. Yeah, and, and there, there's a little bit of kind of the spirit of volunteerism and mm -hmm. contribution. So there, there, if, if, if the Little League Board is able to come up with some additional support, resources, whatever that might help mitigate the cost, and I, I know that they're trying to do that in earnest. Um, and all I shared is that uh, we'll certainly, I mean, as a park facility, see you know what, what we can do because I can see how it's prohibitive. Um, the other issue um, around that. Um, just drawing a little bit of a, a, a they a are cost sharing on. with they have oh. cost shared with us on several of the improvements but after the window came other <laughs> items yeah. that we've also uh, worked with them to to address I think they were looking at just seeing if they can have temporary cooling where they can rent while so they can operate until it's kind of an interim plan and you until mean like a more temporary a air conditioning right right like that works renting. for working but it doesn't work much for storage it doesn't stuff, so, so I mean, it, it's I, I think everything my understanding that might be able to blow other cool air on I think they're kind of getting by oh. right now until until we can figure it out we're happy to work on short-term solutions and a longer term uh, our only concern with a temporary unit is that it could walk off and we are yes, still working correct. to address mm -hmm. lockup of the facility by mm -hmm. volunteers mm -hmm. and, and proper security in that area mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll keep talking with them if we can find something that's low-hanging fruit that can be put in place right away um, at the cost of a few hundred dollars, which I think is yeah. what the rental is anticipated to be. It'll buy us a week's time for council's consideration on a budget adjustment. Okay. Right, if we can do that, but it, uh, ultimately, if there's a possibility for this to come back on the 23rd for the general yeah, fund, would that it. be? Sure. Yes. Okay. I think that's all right. No, yeah, but if we can do something in the meantime as it gets warmer, you know, I know it hasn't been the past few days, but. You know, once you start to get locked up I in there. I think one way might be for them to incur the cost and us reimburse them because then they'll have skin in the game and lock mm -hmm. up the facility. For but the rental? For the rental. For the it rental. might be sure. something to think about. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can communicate that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I, I think they'd be amenable to yeah. that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. All Thank right. you. All right. So uh, we'll continue with city council member reports. Uh, anything else you'd like to report, uh, Mayor Tim Morton? Um, I, 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 other than a couple of meetings, I know. I apologize for um, being late. Um, and actually, I, even though I was working for industry, um, I did have an opportunity to um, share some time with uh, Assembly Member um, Garcia. Unfortunately, we didn't cover this bill that he was looking for the support <laughs> um, uh, support on, but uh, um, had an opportunity on behalf of the uh, city of Brawley to continue to. Um, thank his support, um, I think, for the region in general and the district. Um, and uh, outside of that, the ad hoc committee work. I know that uh, Council Member um, Howard Gamsher um, did, a, did a great job of presenting um, our, our work and our findings there. So hopefully that went well and um, had also a very um, positive um, um, meeting and uh, long awaited because uh, uh, just timing and schedules and whatnot, but I had an opportunity to sit down with Council Member Hamby and uh, share some of our own ideas uh, together. So, um, and I think in particular talking about, about downtown. So, um, outside of that, unless I'm missing something, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have to report. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and yeah. the Lion Center pool. The heater. I think you wanted to mention that one. I, well. I did. Is it working? Uh, it, 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 <laughs> it, it, it working? And running, but it's on life support. It's, it's on, on, life, life, support. on life, life support. That's probably another issue, and I had nothing to do with that. I did not break that. We you won't know, need so the heater until break. like December, right? Did you break it? So yeah, it's on yeah, life support. It's okay. currently being yeah. used. Um, if we could have Marjo just for a moment, if you wouldn't mind, warmer. to give a quick oh, update on what's occurring and some of yeah. the discussions that have taken place with our high school coach and some of their okay. expectations for the um, their their expectations for the high school is that the water temperature for their meets needs to be between 78 and 82 there are actually two heaters one is working and, and up and going the other one is not going to work mm -hmm. until it's repaired or replaced mm -hmm. um, and that's what <coughs> we're attempting to do is make sure that we keep the water up to up to that heating level other organizations um, Minimum heat level is in the 65 degree range, but for the high school, it needs to be between 78 and 82. Mm. Um, yesterday it was 80, today it was 80. 
It seems kind because of warm. they're they're keeping the heater on in order to do that. And, and that was my question to you with respect to the heater being on constantly, right? Does that put a lot of strain on that particular unit? Yeah. Yes, it does because it's doing the yeah. it's All heating the work, for uh -huh. two. It won't um, stop. It, it keeps going. Yeah, it just keeps running. Right yeah. for the heating element, the 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 one that isn't broken it has a separate. I, I'm learning anyway. Mm -hmm. The second unit has a um, separate pump that keeps water circulated so that nothing rusts out, nothing gets dry or anything. So the heating element is not on, but the water still gets um, gets flowing through the uh -huh. actual heater. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and then right the now, sun helps. Right now the water temp is as 80. good as it's going to get. Is that is that? It's about 80 right now. The, and, and it's about what? 80, 80 right degrees. now, today. Did it warm up? Because well, that's pretty it obvious. wasn't last. It meets the it was probably more in the It meets 60s. their requirement. I think the though, day that you emailed me, which was Thursday or Friday, yes, Thursday, I think uh, it, the heaters were off. Were okay. Off that day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was cold. Right. But since then, we've sure. turned it on. And because of the volume of water, it and only one right. heater, it does take a while for it to bring up, to yeah. be brought up. So yesterday and today, it's reached 80. And, and I know historically we're getting to the months where that's going to turn off Mother Nature takes over anyways, right? Exactly. Soon, and so. that usually happens in April or May every year, from yeah. what I understand. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to need to be May, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. part of We've the budget the adjustment wind. we have uh, in draft form. Uh, Parks and Rec has been a great beneficiary of uh, Marjo's budget planning process, mm -hmm. uh, which means we're trying to get um, on track for what it costs to really operate the department and meet uh, the service levels that have been expressed as desirable by the council. Uh, we are very short from a budget point of view to deliver those services in that format, but uh, I just hope you keep your minds open to the budget adjustment as it's prepared and presented to you. Um, there might be a little bit of a shock associated with those figures. I expect sticker shock. So. Shock and pools don't go together. You know <laughs> no, I mean? yeah. no, they don't. And we'll make well, sure that our fire insurance like. yeah. has those little things to break it's if cold, it really huh? does go into shock. Right. Right. But it is okay. expensive. I have a whole Maybe it's well, thank, thank you. And I will deal. wait till Monday to Perfect. bring part of it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. So we'll move on. Thank you again. Uh, City Council Member reports and we'll go to uh, Council Member Hamby. Thank you, Mayor. I attended the library board meeting as a council liaison. It's always a good time. It's it's pretty much all women except for me, and so there's there's a lot of uh, we we talk a lot in that meeting. So <laughs> kind of like it's kind of like being at a council meeting. Mm -hmm. It goes almost as long sometimes, <laughs> but it's a good time. And Marjo always brings something to drink for all of us. By now she knows my favorite drink. So. Um, and then the next night, uh, in honor of National Library Week, we had a library book night where we discussed a book that uh, several members of the community got to read. And it was uh, a good time. Um, other than that, I haven't been to a whole lot of uh, meetings or events. Um, I did get, I fielded some questions from some concerned community members regarding um, some park scheduling issues, which, I've, which I brought to the city manager's attention. And um, I, I think a lot of times what it comes down to is miscommunication. And I, I'm sure, Marjo, you've, you've gotten your fill of that. But I'm learning. <laughs> but uh, I, I really do hope that we can, that we can work with these uh, clubs and, and be more transparent with the, uh, with the scheduling. It's just I know it's hard for them to, to see that schedule and, and know that someone else already reserved a park or that you know they they don't know when their actual reservation is um, I also fielded a question or a concern about some dog nuisances multiple dog many dogs in, in yards I'm sure everyone everyone here gets to do that from time to time so just uh, very important. just enjoying the public interaction so all right well thank you very much thanks Councilmember Kastner, how do you? Okay, um, several of us actually attended the uh, Anthony Garcia Foundation uh, oh, annual yeah. 5K walkathon. A few people ran. Mayor Pro Tem participated in no. running, and some of us walked, <laughs> which was really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was a it was a great event. There's been several of those, of those actually in this past week, and um, you know, if anybody 
is interested in doing that sort of thing, you could find a uh, walkathon or a bit. Yeah. Um, in, the, in Imperial County every weekend. Um, that was fun. Anyway, we were all real uh, happy to be able to participate in that. And then uh, also supported another downtown event um, last weekend. Uh, the one that was the um, Cesar, Cesar Chavez uh, celebration event. Um, they had a good turnout for that also, uh, live music. And you actually, we had the opportunity to uh, participate in that event, go over and, and uh, visit Patties on the Rock, and then go over to Inferno's and kind of did a triangle all night. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And I think uh, the uh, the owners of the Inferno and Patties also appreciated that they got uh, a lot of business as a result of that particular event. And other than that, I um, met with uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Wharton, and we continued working on our presentation. And we're going to we're going to meet again. Okay. There were a few things that we needed right. to address. So, yep. and that's my report. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to Councilmember Couchman. Okay. Um, I attended the Air Pollution Control District uh, Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, that was, to make a long story short, we discussed um, a report that they have to do yearly uh, to the federal government, and it's related to our PM10 or particle matter 10 and 2.5. And in that report, what, what their consultants and the county are telling the federal government is that we would be in compliance with the requirements except for the air pollution that comes in from a foreign country. And that would be the Mexicali region. Uh, they do, it provides a, a, a tremendous amount of air pollution into the Calexico area. And it does extend all the way into El Centro and also a little bit into the Brawley area. And so that puts us out of compliance. With that report, what they hope to do is convince the federal government that that's what does occur and that ultimately Imperial County will, be, will receive a waiver uh, because they would be in compliance otherwise. And there's nothing, well, there's things that are being done about the air pollution in Mexico, both from Mexico's side and the United States side. However, I don't see a solution occurring any time uh, in the next year or two. So I think it's going to be a continuing issue. Uh, we may run into issues with the Salton Sea as we move along with it, with this, 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 uh, the sea's decline and, and, it's, it's, and it's moving back from its borders. But, but I think right now the prime thing is Mexico and its air pollution into Imperial County. And so that was a discussion. Hopefully the federal government will see it their way and the consultant's way and we can move forward with that. I did the chamber mixer ribbon cutting at Monarch Iconography uh, and that was a, a great event and they had a pretty good turnout. It was a little windy outside but I think they did a good job and it showcases the warehouse type facility and the business businesses that are located in with Billy Handigas's building on the corner there where the old motorcycle repair place used to be. So I think that's a, that's a great thing. Um, I also did the Anthony Garcia run walk, I, memorial run walk. I actually walked. I believe I finished first in my age group. Um, I'm not sure about that. It's like anything over 60, 64, you know, 64 and over. I think in my age group, I think I finished first, although Norma may have beat me. Uh, so maybe I only finished second, but Donnie finished first in his age group. So I think that's that's a great I thing beat you too. For sure. Did you beat me for sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you were younger then, though. Yeah, maybe. You were yeah, younger. You were younger then. You've had a lot of birthdays since she ran. Yeah. So, oh, um, Sam was the only one in his age group, and he came in second. Yeah, I can. No, I was the only one in my age group, and I came in first. <laughs> That's with help, you know, I got a piggyback ride around the, you know, around <laughs> half, of the, half of the two miles. No, and then, okay, the only other thing I have to report is um, Rotary will do a work day on the Cattle Call Park on the 28th of April. And so we've asked the city to do some work for us, and I've discussed that with the city manager and with Miguel with, with Parks. And so what we're going to do is we'll repaint the tables mm -hmm. and some of the stands, for the metal for the tables. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do a little bit of cleanup and that's what we'll be doing on that day with some youth to help us and some of the local Rotary members. Uh, we try to do that on a yearly basis during the work day for Rotary and hopefully we can get that part. What we, what we would tell people, if you have people going out there for that Saturday on the 28th for something, we will be painting the tables. They will dry very quickly, but you may have to delay some parties. We'll, we'll, we'll try to do that early in the morning and we'll try to get it done hopefully by the noontime mm -hmm. time period. And so that's what we'll be working for. So, And Great. that's all I have to report. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your 
report. Um, I participated uh, and attended the mayor's summit in Calexico a few days ago, and that was with the other local mayors, and we had mayors from uh, San Luis and from Yuma that were there as well. We ended up taking a tour of the downtown port of entry. I thought that was very interesting. So uh, ended up on the roof, and we were able to take some pictures and get a view of the uh, new um, uh, port of entry that is being built uh, currently. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's got a 30-year lifespan that is planned out. And it should uh, help um, f uh, the flow of, of uh, commuter traffic. So I think it's going to, uh, you know, benefit you know not just the residents that travel to Mexico and come back, but really the the daily traffic. And I think there's like 13,000 trips that come through there every day. So it should uh, improve the flow considerably. And it's going to be really um, uh, a much different port of entry where they they have. Uh, it's 10 lanes coming in from the Mexico side, coming in to the U.S. side. And uh, unlike what it is currently, where it's like two lanes and it breaks up to multiple, so it should help increase speeds uh, pretty significantly. And they'll have, uh, they're, they're going to be dynamic lanes, so they'll be able to make them like sentry lanes or, or uh, ready lanes, you know, so just by change of signage, they'll be able to do that. So I think that's... That's a great thing as well. Now, one, one item that they shared with us is like uh, uh, almost 50% of travelers use Sentry. So that's, I didn't mm -hmm. recognize that wow. so many so people long. were Sentry users. So that's, that certainly helps. It's a trip. Trip. So I, I, I did attend that, uh, you know, well, well put on by the city of Calexico. I appreciate the invitation. And uh, there is an upcoming uh, public safety summit that's uh, taking place in May. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll bring the details for that as well. I also participated at the Cesar Chavez uh, celebration, um, you know, invited uh, or I welcomed the public on behalf of the city of Brawley as the mayor and uh, nice, nice audience and the, the weather cooperated. It was a little bit windy during the day, um, but uh, it cleared out uh, d during the evening and, and, you know, it seemed like by all measures very enjoyable um, by everyone who attended. So I was happy to be able to, to participate. I was also, um, you know, I did do some some um, running at the Anthony Garcia Foundation uh, 5K, and I, you know, I honestly, I, I surprised myself um, just by the fact that I, I ran, you know, through probably a third of it. So, you know, for me, that was a big accomplishment. I hope to be able to do some more. I'll be doing a 5K in about two weeks too in El Centro, so wow. that'll be cool. So, um, yeah, so it started something. So hopefully that continues. Um, also attended the Monarch Icon Iconography Iconography um, uh, mixer yesterday, mm -hmm. and so that was a nice mixer. Is uh, my sister Irma? That's her longtime friend Leticia, who's uh, you know they they've been uh, friends for many many years since like this fifth or sixth grade, and so um, you know it's great to see her business uh, develop, and especially here in downtown. So I'm happy to see that. Uh, my daughter. And my wife, uh, they participated at the public library, and I wanted to thank the public library, Brawley Public Library, and the Lambs Bus for being out there, um, and they were able to Looks enjoy so that. Nice. And I, I believe they ran into Councilmember Couchman out there. You were in there buying yes, some books. Yes, I was at the book sale. I yeah, forgot to mention sale, huh? that I did go to the book sale, yeah, Friends so, of the Library book sale. Yes. Right. So, again, thank you for that benefit for city residents. And uh, yes. my daughter could talk, and she says a few words now. She'd thank you, too. So. <laughs> And uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it at that. But again, thank you, everybody, public and staff, and everyone else for uh, for uh, all the work that you're doing. And uh, Lloyd, thank you for the pen. This has become my favorite blue pen. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll move on. We'll move on to the city manager's report. No, oh, no, you got for your uh, Norma says she needs one for her birthday. Do you have one? I gave her one. Uh oh, oh, see, she, you, you gave have us one, one. You gave, us one. You gave me one. That's right. She gave it, and it was a birthday one. <laughs> it was All a right. birthday gift. Yes, last week. All right. Next <laughs> item on the agenda: City Manager's <laughs> report, update on Old Highway 111 North 8th Street stakeholder meeting. I did want to share with Council that I had the opportunity, with the help of uh, Kate Procola, to sit down with stakeholders in the North 8th Street Old uh, Highway 111 corridor. It was a really um, helpful information exchange from uh, staff's point of view. Guillermo Cias, our city engineer, did join in that conversation. There were uh, several uh, kind of points that I would describe as highlights that came out of it. Uh, there was a, a desire for uh, 
a little bit more formality as it relates to use of relinquishment funds, um, specifically looking to take the verbal direction that's been provided by council that the two and a half that goes with 8th Street and the six and a half that goes with Main that really stays uh, uh, for those purposes and so um, there was some exploration as to how that could uh, be uh, 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 accomplished uh, and uh, I would be happy to take uh, council direction as part of our strategic planning process those discussions um, were introduced uh, and not only with reference to the principal um, balance but also the interest in the manner in which that's accrued um, there uh, was also a great deal of interest in, in being certain that once some work is performed out on 8th Street, that a maintenance plan be adopted and that the city commit to uh, use of the funds that are for that purpose, uh, that regular maintenance <coughs> be on the agenda um, for that segment of the roadway. Um, in general, I think the orientation was that 8th Street needs attention as soon as possible. Um, I did uh, take the time and, and uh, the group was patient enough to allow me to explain what our typical process is, that we begin with uh, programming projects in a given budget year. Um, we are anticipating uh, that uh, either a collective letter or multiple letters and or participation at the special um, and enterprise funds workshop that will have this topic come forward in a written uh, format. Um, we talked a little bit about the various ways to approach 8th Street, whether a short term um, time horizon, a midterm or a longer term is desirable. Um, it is very clear from the stakeholders that their interest is in having something done as soon as possible. And while uh, they uh, entertained uh, the description of the option to use relinquishment funds as match dollars that are leveraged with a much larger project, um, some of the sentiments generally were oriented towards uh, wanting something now and not planning to be in business for 40 years or necessarily operating their locations, wanting something today, not, not really um, desiring a 30 or 40 year solution from from their point of view and I, I you know tried my best to describe these are the policy interests that have to be weighed and um, it's exactly why um, council um, you know will have to to determine the ultimate policy direction um, there was also an exploration of how outsourcing might be able to expedite um, I shared with the group that we are, you know, experiencing some severe um, staffing uh, challenges right now with uh, a total of, uh, I think we're at 15 uh, full-time vacancies uh, with uh, the most recent uh, being one of our civil engineering positions. And so our in-house capacity to move projects, we're going to have to think really differently about how to move those projects that are both in the queue and time sensitive from the point of view of outside funding, as well as high priority to the council and community. Um, we um, explored what a, uh, an outsourced design um, alternative might look like. We explored um, any number of uh, scenarios that that might be able to get this effort to move more expeditiously. Um, in, in general, the two scenarios were presented as a very roughly estimated $800,000 solution with a 10 to 15 year time horizon versus an $8 million solution that really considers full build out. Um, something for council to consider in the future is, you know, uh, along that stretch of highway, old highway 111, we have Webster Ranch when that project ever builds, right now it's an ag use um, and has a single owner, mm -hmm. um, if it were ever to develop, they would be tasked with the same improvements that um, if we went the route of a match and full scale improvements would take the burden off of them. And it's kind of like chicken and egg where you look at Highway 86 and some of the issues we have with businesses that want a site there because they have traffic uh, trips but the cost of developing on a frontage like that when um, 
less than modern improvements um, are currently in place. So um, after the meeting, I did have an opportunity to speak at length with uh, Guillermo Cias, our city engineer. I did want to share with you that um, we are looking uh, at a situation where we're likely to be delayed on the delivery of phase 11 of our LTA projects. And uh, because of the solution uh, that's used for LTA with the ARAM product, uh, it is not recommended to install uh, those improvements when temperatures are in excess of 100 degrees. Yeah. So it's possible that we uh, will uh, delay uh, implementation of that project till after September. Um, that project's uh, nearly entirely ready to go from a bid document point of view. Mm -hmm. You might recall this is Southeast Brawley along mm -hmm. with the alley improvement between 1st and 2nd Street on the south side of, of Maine. Is the alley improvement still being considered? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the reason I ask is because there was a comment made at ICTC with respect to that. Um, the alley issue there is um, there at the. Uh, 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 let me finish this sure. one and I'll go, go ahead, back go to ahead. that one because yeah, that's actually a very uh, interesting topic that arose okay. at the bond oversight. Good. Uh, okay. Keep. keep LTA I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Okay. Alley eligibility. Okay. So it's currently designed and bundled to go with that project. If the council um, wished to do the 10 to 15 year solution, we do have a rare window to hop onto the LTA phase 11. That doesn't mean it'll be funded by phase 11. It means that the, the procurement process, the mm -hmm. bidding process that we go through, we could uh, work to incorporate a solution for 8th Street, that shorter term um, Yeah, that might make it easier. Solution I mean, and actually have yes. it accomplished before the end of the calendar year. Yeah. Um, I would need to know from council, is this something you want to do because we need to move rapidly to get some work done to prepare that portion of the bid specs based on the actual geotech investigation of yeah. what is there, what needs to be there, and what an ARAM solution could look like. Could, could we talk about that at, on the 23rd? You want it on the workshop just, agenda just, for general fund? Well, no, it, it could just be that discussion and then it could be on a future agenda for maybe action. But you know, I think it's appropriate to talk about it during the general fund workshop for sure. I, I don't know that we don't. I don't know that we yeah. don't need to move quicker than that. I don't know that we don't need to give staff direction, and move. And maybe we could vote on approval on the twenty third, or maybe we could do what, something. What we need to like do. I, I'm anticipating that that like a preliminary engineering report that that would likely be in excess of fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I'd have to have your your authorization yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. What I could do is direct staff to go get a quote. Well, from a party that we know is very well acquainted with that segment mm -hmm. of Old Highway 111, I think um, that's and is I think we yeah. recommended by our city engineer as the fastest to get across the finish line. Come back the 23rd or one of those yeah. later meetings. So if that's and, something and of interest, yeah. we're happy forward. to well, look then at that. We're not dealing with anecdotal you know, yeah. numbers right. and no. I think that's appropriate. Been, yeah, so yeah. And I think is there any other concern from? Anybody else? Any concerns? I think we. I think we want the direction for the short term, the 10 to 15. You know, I think that's what we were. I think that's what I'm looking at. I don't yeah. know about the rest that's of the That's what I would, I would. I think we move forward with it. Push okay, it forward. Okay, so coming back to you at a future quickly. meeting, but our goal will be possible. to get a quote for the evaluation piece with the end goal of seeing. Now, if the gentleman comes back and says the state of what's there is beyond an ARAM solution, sure. we'll let you then, know that. Yeah, but then I, we'll I, talk about it. This will allow Go. the use of relinquishment funds to get this. Uh, engineering mm -hmm. solution identified yeah. so and, and piggyback on the LTA we, we, and piggyback on LTA yeah. and, yeah. and, and move it but forward. You, but you just made a statement that ARAM couldn't be done during the summer and it, so, so it would if get, this is so we would, take those bid documents yeah, that are right, currently right. LTA phase 11 plus the alley right and we would add this another, this project uh, we expand the scope of work to be 8th street the funds right. for LTA will fund LTA right mm -hmm. relinquishment street funds LTA would be well, exactly. but we wouldn't necessarily use ARAM for this project the project on, on a street possible. it is it is possible the structural section is found to be in the shape that we hope okay. it is all right it may be possible okay mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking for Guillermo do you want to add He's anything right Guillermo to the conversation I don't know how much more you want to want to hear from a technical point of view but happy to but they need to make that evaluation. That's why we're, right. we're okay. providing okay. the direction. All right. uh -huh. Gotcha. Uh, what the city manager uh, mentioned that uh, we put together a better rough estimate. It was considering the type of rehabilitation that 
on preliminary conversation with uh, other uh, uh, technical people, they expressed that it is uh, suitable uh, to install this type, type of uh, rehabilitation that will be uh, quick uh, and will be um, durable and less, less expensive than the, the full sure. um, reconstruction. Okay. All right. So, but of course, that we will need to uh, do some more investigation to know exactly what is uh, the structural section and uh, provide a recommendation uh, that is according to what is existing and that will be able to sustain the, the traffic loads there. Fantastic. So what you're looking for is our direction to do that and proceed right. with that. We're so we're we've already forward. given we're you that, so that's what I think we need to do. And the expectation is that the relinquishment funds would be used to pay for the engineering right. report right. as Correct. well as the future work if a solution is viable that can be added as I think, an I think we got it. Let's, let's, let's move we're on. Good. I think let's we're, we're okay. going to just no, touch on good. the same topic. Okay. So we're yeah. good. Okay. All right, okay. the next item. Uh, or, I have ahead. a couple of other items. Wanted to let you know with reference to the Brawley Mobile Home Park that uh, lead paint testing, uh, lead, ba lead paint and asbestos test testing is now complete. We are expecting the demo permit uh, any day to come in the door. So good. looking That's forward good to that. Too. Wanted to also <laughs> note that uh, the dispatcher appreciation dinner was last Friday. Yes. Uh, very highly attended by our dispatchers uh, valley-wide. Um, they're kind of an underappreciated group, so it was a chance to uh, really celebrate uh, the work they do behind the screens mm -hmm. of the city and behind the phones, and it was a really, really nice gathering, so I was glad to be able to show our support for our dispatchers. All right. That, city, All right. thank you very much for your report. Very thorough. City Attorney's report. We're working on a lot of things. We'll have a short closed session. Okay. I like your style. <laughs> City I, know, clerk? I, I know you like them short. <laughs> City clerk's report? Nothing to report. Even better, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you, everyone. We're going to go into closed session in, in five minutes. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.